Excuse me, the dog. <clears throat> All right, guys. It is a hot, sticky, humid, hopefully soon to be stormy night here. <clears throat> yes, and the collapse of everything, including this chair I'm sitting in, seems to be collapsing here on uh, this sticky Friday night, July 5th, <clears throat> where I am thrilled to announce that everybody canceled at Bugs in a Jar tonight. A every single person canceled tonight. Uh, so I went from having a full house to having the place to myself and uh, anybody who thinks they're getting their money back uh, from the super host can go fuck themselves. <coughs> Although no one's asking for their money back, but anyway, uh, as uh, some of you, how long, it has now been 34 hours, 34 hours uh, <clears throat> since I began my doom scrolling fast yesterday morning and uh, just wondering what to do with my life. And uh, so since it is Friday night, July 5th, I'm going to go ahead with my ain't gonna happen rant. So before you people blow the bullshit whistle, what we're gonna do is look at a few um, things from uh, from medium.com for our ain't gonna happen that I had already set aside before my doom scrolling fast started. So <clears throat> I have enough here to cobble together an ain't gonna happen rant. Uh, and then have to decide since I can't watch Sandy's show tonight, I think I'm going to watch this show on Netflix about this uh, clueless fucking moron over there from the Netherlands who ha apparently has fathered up to as many as 1,000 children. Uh, I have not watched this uh, Netflix documentary uh, yet. Uh, there will be a rant on it, a review of it, if I can stomach it. Uh, but this might have been the very last article where I, yesterday morning, <clears throat> where I said uh, I'm just, uh, I, I'm done with doom scrolling. Doom scrolling ain't gonna happen for a week. After this, I, you know, this really isn't germane to the ain't gonna happen. I, I, I just absolutely love this from Business Insider. The sperm donor at the center of the man with 1,000 kids says he plans to sue Netflix. Here is where clueless fucking moron Jonathan Jacob Meyer is now. <clears throat> okay, where do you think? the man who fathered 1,000 kids. <clears throat> I, uh, I, 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 you cannot make this up. I <clears throat> uh, can't make this up. On May 5th, he uploaded a video from Tanzania, from Tanzania, you know, in Sub-Saharan Africa, explaining that he decided to leave the Netherlands because it had become overpopulated. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the layers of irony that some clueless fucking moron, <clears throat> uh, I guess by proxy, knocks up 1,000, no, nobody knows, no one will ever know, <clears throat> he brings 1,000 humans onto this planet. One man brings 1,000 humans on this planet, <clears throat> and then he gets fed up with the overpopulation in his country 
and moves to Tanzania. <clears throat> anyway, I, I, I just had to get that one in. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and that, that I, I'm pretty sure that was the very last mainstream media news uh, doomer porn story that I read and threw up my hands and said, I'm fucking done with it. But uh, I will try to stomach that tonight and bring you a review. So the, we're, we're not going to even hear from all the ain't going to happens on the mainstream media because I'm, 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 I'm done with listening to them. And <clears throat> so we're going to kind of take a back door into the mainstream media uh, if, if the Guardian is considered this. And I, I, I have to admit, they, I, I've tried to read, this is the second week in a row that uh, Eric Lee, who I have a lot of uh, respect for, the second week in a row that his medium essay, I cannot tell by reading it whether he endorses the ain't gonna happen or, or I think what Eric is doing is holding it up as an ain't gonna happen but he never comes right out and says it ain't gonna happen so Eric <clears throat> uh, for two weeks in a row uh, you're, you're, you're writing uh, I, I guess it's on purpose but anyway and then he gets in here, he, he quotes at length from this Guardian article, and then uh, I am uh, completely confused. Uh, I, I am completely confused whether a lot of, I, I don't know if some fellow named Jeremy Lent is talking here or if David King is talking here. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> uh, this is Eric Lee talking about some guy named Jerry Lent talking about some guy named David King. But anyway, what the subject was about <clears throat> is the ecological civilization ecological civilization is where we can be headed. This is a big deal <clears throat> to begin to see this phrase used in the media to help coalesce what is possible and uh, I guess the name of the article As I say, I honestly don't know who the hell wrote the article. I think some guy named David King wrote an article in The Guardian titled, Humanity's Survival is Still Within Our Grasp. Just. But only if we take these radical steps. So uh, this is David King, who is chair of the Climate Crisis Advisory Group, an independent body of scientists providing analysis on global warming and is one of Britain's most eminent chemists. And what does David King, one of Britain's most eminent chemists, say... <clears throat> we have to do to survive, reduce emissions, build resilience, repair ecosystems, and remove greenhouse gases. These are the four R's that can save us, says David King. <clears throat> uh, So, 
he's calling the uh, he's calling the th th this is Eric calling that title clickbait as usual. Okay, now we're back to uh, we're we're back to Eric. He goes back and forth between himself and the article. Uh, a little bit uh, of a confusing uh, setup here. <clears throat> back to Eric. Radical steps. And inquiring minds want to know, let me guess, reduce emissions, build resilience, repair ecosystems, remove greenhouse gases. Yes, these are the four R's that can save us from above in case you missed it. <clears throat> but Jeremy, and I don't know at what point Jeremy, where he comes into it, tells me it all leads to, quote, ecological civilization, but I will wait for it, and uh, then uh, <clears throat> I, I like how he, he mentions uh, Wally Brecker, climate scientist Wally Brecker. I had the honor of being the last person on the planet to interview Wally Brecker, that's spelled B-R-O-E-C-K-E-R. I think that I that I might have killed Wally Brecker uh, in, in, in that interview. Uh, he was kind of a crotchety old man. I think he was like 88 years old, and he died six weeks after I interviewed him. So uh, sorry for killing Wally, but you can find that interview somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> okay, then then he's, he's quoting from, he's picking out some of his favorite quotes from the article, whether this is Jeremy Lent or David King, I have no clue anymore who is saying this, but it doesn't matter. By, according to whoever it is, by 2050, perhaps some form of humanity will survive, and I do agree that will happen. I'm not saying that's an ain't, ain't going to happen. Uh, there, there might be 10 billion people uh, on this planet in 2050. S perhaps some form of humanity will survive managing the challenges of continued extreme weather events, ice loss, and sea level and temperature rise. <clears throat> but here in 2024, we have the agency. I, I'm, I'm getting so fucking sick and tired of this word agency. Uh, am, am I the only one who is getting sick and tired? But I do like how the first two letters in the word agency or A-G, ain't gonna, ain't gonna entsy. It ain't gonna entsy, uh, so at least the word agency is two-thirds of the way there. Uh, if you ever see the word agency, <clears throat> you can just add the H as the third letter, it ain't gonna happen, okay? Agency, that mnemonic device about the A-G, is code for ain't gonna happen. But we, meaning humans, have agency to change this, and a thriving future is still on the table. To grasp it, we must embark on a radical journey encompassing an essential 4R planet pathway. Yes, saving the world, that this is just kind of a mashup of the quotes that Eric was having fun with, saving the world for modern humans, quote, will require global, go global governance and collaboration rarely seen. But if not now, then when? If not for this cause, then for what? Yes. Continuing with the uh, with the Guardian article, beyond policy changes and investment, a seismic 
cultural shift is imperative to steer humanity away from self-destruction towards a just and sustainable future. We must realign, we must, I guess between now and 2050, it's a little unclear how long we have to do this, <clears throat> we must realign our political will, I think that's R number five, Econ the realignment, the R number five. So what do we need to realign? Our political will, our economic priorities, and our social values to recognize that ecological well-being is matched to human well-being. Yes. Uh. Fulfillment should come from quality, not quantity, and from nature, not new things. Yes, we can choose to transition our societies into a sustainable period of ecological civilization, which of course is a, as I think Eric Lee realizes, ecological civilization is one of these ridiculous uh, oxymorons, you, you know, uh, like sustainable development and Guy McPherson's new one, collective human intelligence. Uh, the, the very concept of an ecological civilization is, is absurd on the face of it. Civilizations destroy ecosystems. There is no such thing, never has been, sure as shit never will be in the next 24 years or ever, any such thing as an ecological civilization. Even Book Hermit <coughs> was kind of brushing up on this. We're going to, I might get around to my Book Hermit rant tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, so, Book Hermit, were you suggesting today that you hold out any 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 for an ecological civilization? All right. Uh, over the coming decades, as we are faced with a self-inflicted set of global challenges, the need for such a cultural transformation will drive action. <clears throat> yes, the need for such a cultural transformation will drive action. The process must begin now. Yes. Uh... Hello, this is back to Eric, <clears throat> Eric Lee. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Jeremy was right. King ends by claiming that all we meet modern, all we moderns, I guess meaning modern humans, have to do is choose to have the political will to transition to an ecological civilization within which we moderns and cars and smartphones can live forevermore. <clears throat> Jack Alpert, and I also have had the pleasure for inter of interviewing Jack Alpert. When you're uh, checking out the Wally Brecker, go listen to my interview with Jack Alpert. He has a link to, uh, to some essays by Jack Alpert. Jack Alpert agrees, you know, with David King, except no cars. Up to maybe 50 million modern humans could live in free hydro-powered megacities for the next 300 hundred years, maybe more. <clears throat> but as much respect as I have for Jack Alpert, the guy knows goddamn well that 
uh, 50 million people uh, are not going to live in three hydro-powered megacities for the next 300 hundred years. Oh, this is Eric. And by the way, the underlying systemic problem is not global capitalism. So far as I know, capitalism did not begin 75,000 years ago. Anyway, thank you, uh, Eric Lee. And we're going to uh, have, have two more. This is from this fellow, uh, <clears throat> Jan Stort. Jan Stort with the simple title, Saving Civilization. Yes. And uh, this is a good, uh, it, it, it's a good kind of, uh, if you're fairly new, to the uh, Doomosphere, uh, it, 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 it is kind of a good primer or primer, whichever way you choose to uh, uh, <clears throat> pronounce the word. Uh, it goes through all the ways that uh, we basically failed to save civilization <clears throat> and uh, let's just pick up uh, towards the end and, and, and guys I, 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 I am so confused okay the, the name of the article is saving civilization <clears throat> take it away Jan Stort after he spends all this time telling us how we have no chance to save civilization. Okay, Jim. Uh, well, let's start right here. The summers the scientists warned us about by 2050 are here today. The global warming of one and a half C has already been breached. Scientists are now making new estimates of two and a half C to three C in 50 years unless drastic measures are taken. <clears throat> we are prisoners of the current method of powering our civilization, our billion internal combustion engines and generators. Uh, I'm thinking there, there's a shitload more than, than, than any one billion uh, internal combustion engines and generators on this planet. The goddamn Amish family down the street from me, I, they have at least 12 internal combustion engines on their Amish organic farm that I'm aware of. Our billion internal combustion engine and generators require combustible fuel such as gasoline, kerosene, diesel oil, natural gas, or hydrogen gas. In 2023, natural deposits of five and a half trillion tons of hydrogen were discovered in various places in the world, enough to replace what we need for the next 200 years. Yes, but it must have an accessible distribution system now. All right, it is hydrogen that's going to save us. And if that doesn't work, <coughs> cloud seeding. <coughs> I, I, I have no idea what, the, what this clueless moron is talking about here. Cloud seeding tested in San Francisco last October resulted in the creation of very large cloud formations that reflect sunlight back into space. This would temporarily eliminate dangerous heat to high population centers facing extreme heat events. There you go. And of course, duplicating aerosols 
can you say solar radiation management, what some people like to call chemtrails, duplicating aerosols in the high atmosphere? Yes, uh, like when Mount Pinatuba erupted in, 90, in 1991, the ultralight particles like the soda ash stayed in the atmosphere and cooled the earth by several degrees. This, this guy is completely fucking clueless. Okay. He, uh, the Mount Pinatubo cooled the earth by several degrees, which of course would have thrown us into an ice age had that been true. Ultralight particles in the stratosphere continually injected continually injected from here to eternity or spread by planes would reflect two percent of the sunlight back into space giving us time to replace fossil fuels there we go <clears throat> whatever we do we had best get to it as soon as possible. And the final note of how we're going to save the planet. <clears throat> Consider which party will undertake these methods when you consider who to vote for this November. Happy nice day. We have 431 claps. 431 claps for uh, chemtrails, cloud seeding, and hydrogen to save the planet. But uh, we're going to finish with this woman I have never heard of as far as I know on medium.com. I have no idea, no idea where this apocaloptimist came from. Her name is Teresa Ann Story. I think Storia is the uh, best uh, word in that name, girl. In her uh, moronic article, we will survive climate change. Here is how. It will take two things to survive climate change, and they are not wishful thinking and denial. She says, and then she goes into this absolute, uh, just uh, completely randomly worded uh, uh, wishful thinking and denial. So she's mostly talking about wildfires in California. She goes on and on and on. I guess she's using wildfires in California so what are the two things that are not wishful thinking or denial that are going to save us? Adap she calls it adaption. A-D-A-P-T-I-O-N. This clueless moron has no idea how to spell the word adaptation. She thinks it's spelled adaption plus Mitigation, she spelled mitigation right, equals survival. Yes. Uh, okay, so let's see some of these things. So she uses as an example how the firefighting department, Cal Fire, is a perfect example. I, since I'm not reading, uh, I, I'm assuming that California is in flames right now. The last thing I saw that was some <clears throat> major fucking heat wave this weekend in California. Uh, I'm assuming that California is burning uh, while I'm reading this article, but I don't know and uh, don't want to hear about it if it is. Okay. Okay, but on the bigger picture, let's get beyond. Cal Fire is just one example. Climate action with long-term impact now permeates our existence. Action is being taken at all 
levels of government. Climate action is being taken at all levels of government. Climate action is being embraced by businesses and academia. Climate action, I guess, is what she's talking about here, is no longer a fringe topic. It is woven into the fabric of humankind. Climate action is woven into the factory, into the fabric of humankind. Here are some examples. Folding the impact of climate change and methods for reducing extreme wildfires into urban planning education. How about updating building codes to require new homes are built with fire resistant features and materials. She's still talking about wildfires. I, I love this one. <coughs> Investing in coastal ecosystem restoration. Yes. Wetlands, coral reefs, marshes, and mangroves. Yeah, let, let's invest in coral reefs and mangroves to provide a nature based defense against coastal flooding and storm surges. And of course, <clears throat> there is this one passing ambitious legislation by government leaders such as President Biden's. Inflation Reduction Act, which directs almost $400 billion in federal funding towards clean energy with the goal of substantially lowering, lowering the nation's carbon emissions by 2030. Yes, climate change is on virtually everyone's mind. We will survive, but it won't be easy. So she's getting better. She has now changed adaption to, maybe is this right? She's got me confused. Maybe she spelled it right. Ad, adaptation. I, I guess I, I, I've even lost. Okay. Adaptation and mitigation are what is needed to survive our warming planet. Both require we shift our thinking. We shift our thinking, we develop new habits, and genuinely commit to climate goals. We are only one household, but my husband and I agreed we needed to adjust our lifestyles. Motivated to do what we can to fight global warming, we made numerous changes to our home and committed to a more mindful way of living. We installed solar panels. We bought an electric vehicle. We modified our travel plans to mitigate air travel. We started cooking on an induction stovetop, which I actually have one of those in Boy Dragon. We support green businesses, green businesses, not to be confused with businesses that greenwash. And last but not least on the list, we vote for government leaders committed to climate action. Yes. Uh. There you go. Even as I write this, I am observing similar changes being made throughout our neighborhood and our city and our country. If everyone did something, our actions would 
and do add up. Oh, God, you know. Uh, all right, well, if I don't die in a tornado in the next 10 minutes, ring on. I guess this is the storm that was just at a Sandy's house. I'd better unplug this computer. You know, I've got three computers, all, all of them, uh, going completely to hell. I have no battery. So on this computer, I have no battery. I uh, have no keyboard. I have no microphone. I have no camera. <clears throat> but other than that, it's fine. So uh, if anyone's still here, I really do appreciate uh, the uh, folks who have uh, contributed towards my nascent computer, new computer uh, fund. Uh, I am sorry, I, I, I'm drawing a blank. I, I know that several of you, and uh, just because I can't remember your names offhand, I really, really appreciate it. So if anyone would like to contribute to my new computer fund so I can own four computers instead of the three I already own, uh, you can find my PayPal at, uh, at Collapse Chronicles over there on PayPal and send some money to a friend and maybe uh, when I get back to doom scrolling I can do it on a decent computer. But right now I am going to go enjoy this big ass thunderstorm rolling in and watering my blackberries and then uh, go watch the man who fathered 1,000 kids on uh, Netflix. I uh, will be coming back with a rant on that, I assure you. And maybe we will do the book hermit rant tomorrow. <clears throat> my guys. Yes, little dog, we're getting ready to have a big rainstorm. So I just put on my, uh, this is the brand new covered porch on uh, Seahorse. This is, uh, we put this on, when was it, two, three days ago. We now have a roof so I can sit here and enjoy the rain drumming on the tin roof while well, I still can. My guys.